Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we are getting to the fun parts of this. We are going to be cleaning up these slabs, doing the epoxy fill work and uh, installing the arches. So yeah, let's dive in. Last time we did the arches, and this time it's going to start working on these two slabs. These are a red oak. They are actually left over from the table and the desk. Uh, these were cut off at the ends of the desk build. So I want to come through and clean them. There were lots of bugs and dust and things like that. At the uh, toothbrush and uh, popsicle sticks and vacuum, they come out pretty well. Also, on the, a lot of this live edge, I want to get rid of the dirt and junk and take it down to a little bit more of the wood. Uh, we're going to be covering the live edge in epoxy and it's going to be a little bit different here. So the first thing I actually want to do is test the epoxy. I'm going to be using the uh, the thick set here and the total tint package, which is actually kind of a cool package. It takes very, very little dye to make a big difference. Um, so I'm going to be testing up a batch of it and making sure it's the color I want. I want a very, very, very light blue. It's almost clear. Uh, but then I also want a little bit of a metallic fleck in it. Uh, it's very important to drop the lid in um, because, you know, that, that helps the epoxy cure fully. So, <laughs> so we're just going to try with one or two drops of the blue and then one or two drops of the silver. And this one came out way too blue, but I liked the fleck in it. So that gave me an idea when I make up the big batch, I'm just going to put in one or two drops for the whole batch. Now to add the epoxy on this, I was going to tape it up, but there are so many cracks and crevices that come to the outside and such of a natural shape to this that I want to actually do something more. So I bought these vacuum bags and I'll try and leave a link to them down below. They're designed for packing up extra clothes and blankets and things like that. Uh, but for this, it'll actually suck all the air out of them forcing the epoxy deeper into the pores so you'll get a cleaner fill all the way through it. And in the end, I was very, very happy with how that came out. So um, several drops of the blue, several drops of the metallic, just keeping track of how much I put in there so that I can match it every time. Um, I ended up putting, uh, I think it was about a gallon between the two slabs total. Actually, no, it was a little more than that. It was, uh, it was almost uh, three quarters of a gallon uh, per slab, so about a gallon and a half total. And I'm going to dump it in there and then seal it up and vacuum it. And these are kind of cool because you can just put the vacuum on there and the whole thing just goes and uh, voila, you can suck it out. Uh, so we're going to do the other one here as well. And uh, one thing I learned in this that I wish I had done is had something to raise the port up so that the air can get pulled out of it. Unfortunately, I had the slab too close to the port. And that meant that eventually the bubbles would uh, work their way out and then I would start sucking up epoxy. And I really wanted to be able to pull out more bubbles before I got to the epoxy. So it'd be better to actually raise that port up a little bit more so I could stop it. I ended up actually filling my hose with epoxy and had to replace it because my hose became stiff. It was so full of it. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> so uh, I went tried putting the epoxy in first and then putting the slab in. And I think that actually worked a little bit better. Um, that way I could pull the epoxy up through the slab rather than across it and trying to push it down into the slab and getting the bubbles to come up through it. But let them sit for a couple days and we can peel it off. And this bag actually peeled off the epoxy beautifully. Uh, the only downsides to it were the spots where it kind of tucked into itself um, because it had many crinkles and, and curls, but we'll be addressing those. But the bag itself peels off the epoxy perfectly and uh, it was far easier than taking any tape off on any project I've done like that in the past. Uh, and it really left a, an interesting surface here. You can see the bottom side was really nice and smooth because it had a clean, smooth bag. But the top side just was really, um, I don't know, there's some way I've got to be able to use that. Uh, this particular spot was an, a spot where it overheated, uh, which was kind of interesting because I, uh, I had sunlight coming through. It affected it. So we can start uh, flattening this out. I'm going to bring in a chisel and take off most of the high spots with the chisel. I'm just tapping it down and I'm going to take this down to um, bare wood and flatten out both sides of the slab. But for these, they're just a lot of fun because you can take a chisel in and, and pop it off. And a lot of them will pop down to the wood. Then we can come at the scrub plane and actually plane it all down to the wood. And this took quite a while. It was about uh, 20 minutes per slide side to get them down to the wood. So it was a, a decent amount of, of, uh, of planing, but with a good scrub plane, it goes relatively quickly. Then after scrub planing, we can start doing the actual planing and taking this wood down to a nice flat, smooth surface. So yeah, now let's start with the smoothing. <laughs> and I started with a, uh, a number five with a fairly heavy cut and got rid of all the marks from the scrub plane. 
and then came in with the uh, the smoothing plane and uh, went across it like that. I still had some gouges I'm going to need to clean out a little bit later because of going across the grain. You can see some of the places where it's, it's scratched into the wood. So I'm trying to smooth going with the grain and taking care of any of those marks left from the, uh, the more aggressive planes. Uh, but it goes pretty quickly. Now on the uh, the two ends of the board that were cut off with the chainsaw, I was thinking about leaving some epoxy on and leaving it kind of natural edge. But I thought, no, let's actually let's let's clean these off and, and cut them down with the uh, with the saw, so I get a, a flat, clean edge on there. You can see the grain of the wood, and I'm happy I did that. Uh, it ends up being a lot, uh, lot lot happier. Plus, I have this scrap piece that I can use to test the finish and the epoxy, and so we're going to do that on. Um, both ends of each slab so there'll be four cuts um, into the slab and by both ends one of them is on the end and the other one is like 45 degrees off to the, the other face <laughs> but uh, yeah it was uh, two inches of oak to cut through with a handsaw but it goes pretty quickly now that they're all cut up we can take them over to the bench and grab my low angle jack plane and smooth them out and this is really one of the places where a low angle plane really shines is on this end grain it just cuts through it like butter with a 20 degree blade on there and nice and sharp um, it, it'll clean this up really really quickly and you can actually see how the epoxy comes through the end grain on some of the cracks i was really really happy with how it sucked the epoxy deep into the slab and stabilized the whole thing did phenomenally well so now on the other sections with epoxy, I want to leave the epoxy on there, but I want to clean it out and smooth it out so you don't have the wrinkles from the, uh, from the bag, as well as I want it to be some natural edge and some epoxy so that it filled in any of the big gaps. So I come at it with the chisel to remove the large majority of junk. Um, then I can bring in the, uh, uh, bring in the, the spoke shape, there's the word, <laughs> and uh, take off a lot of the material and then come in with a card scraper. And I was very pleased with how well it actually worked with the chisel. Um, I could run down it like this and remove large sections very, very quickly. And it left a relatively good surface, a surface that cleaned up um, very, very quickly with the, with the spoke shape. And you can see some of these places coming off really nice and glossy. Uh, it, it actually chisels really well. So then bring in the spoke shape run it down and uh, then bring in the card scraper to do the final detailing on it and you've got a nice smooth surface. We're going to be doing more uh, polishing on that in the future, bringing it up to a nice glossy surface, but the card scraper gets it really close. Next up there are a few bubbles that were in the wood. The vacuum bags didn't suck everything out. Uh, so for that I'm actually going to be using the high performance glue because it cures much faster. The thick set takes a couple days. Uh, so this high performance can uh, set up in a few hours. So I'll mix in just a little bit of the metallic in there and then I can fill in any of these bubbles to, uh, to clear things out. Uh, that way I get a nice clean surface on top. Um, I think that if I had moved the port farther away from the slab and been able to suck out more air, then I think I would have had less of these bubbles. Uh, but there were really only um, five or six per slab and they came out pretty quickly. With a card scraper, they, uh, they disappear almost instantly. Very, very happy. I, I love the way that the really figured sections of this clean up with a card scraper and they polish down really smooth and shiny. Just absolutely gorgeous. I'm really looking forward to putting finish on this. Next thing I want to do is start with the joinery. So those two arches we created, we need to uh, recess those into either side. And so I needed to find the generalized center of the board. And so I picked several points around the outside and drew a bunch of compass curves and then found the location from it. So I centered out the board on that and then marked either end. And what is important is the two corners that touch the board. I want those two corners um, to be in the exact same place on both slabs. So I crossed those out and marked them. And before actually doing the joinery on this, I needed to come back to these two arches and clean them down. Um, I needed to scrape them and smooth them out um, so that I had uh, the actual finished dimension to them um, as opposed to having the epoxy left on them from the, the finishing. But uh, yeah, card scraper makes really, really quick work of smoothing these out, especially with all that crazy grain. Come back to these two marks on the board and we're going to drive in some finish nails and chip them off. That way there'll be a sharp point sticking up. Um, and I'm going to do that on several locations around where I want the cables to come out of one slab and then into the other. And so we're going to put in all these finish nails, chip them off, and then I can put the other slab on top and line up exactly where I want that slab to be so I can make these two mate. And then we can come in and pound them down. 
Um, my fist was doing okay, and it probably would have marked them fine, but putting a block on there and hitting them down um, will uh, will drive them in really nicely. So then we can pull out the nails, and we have spots on the boards that match identically from top to bottom. Next, I want to do is bring in one of the arches and clamp it up to a square, and this way I know it'll be perfectly vertical, and the top corner on the will match the bottom corner exactly, so that the the thrust from this, the force will be in line with it rather than making it want to twist one way there. Then we'll bring in the square and transfer marks down to where this needs to be recessed. Square off all of those marks, and now I have a rectangle on the surface, and then two dots on either end where the lowest point on this needs to be chiseled down to. So I'm gonna come around the outside and outline it, um, and then come in and chisel down towards that middle line. And I want to basically make two angled cuts coming down that meet at a point down, and so I could measure up when the point of the arch is sitting on the the top I can measure up how far I want it to be recessed and that lets me know how far to go down in can use my depth finder to come in and then uh, make sure that I come down to the exact depth in the middle and so it's just a little bit more of chisel in from one side chop in chisel in from the other side chop in and go back and forth and back and forth until you're close to the same depth uh, once I was close to where I wanted then I went back to my marking gauge lines and chiseled down uh, I still wasn't exactly where I wanted to be in the bottom, um, just uh, got it fairly close. Then we can bring over the piece, and you can see how this will house down in, and I can tap it around with this, and then drive it down in place. Now the other important thing is I want to make sure that it is then square in both directions. So I can put the square in there and move things around, and uh, wiggle it around until it is where it needs to be and then take it out and adjust the hole and then try it in again. I went back and forth and back and forth um, until it got seated down in nice and tight. Uh, these are going to be epoxied down in place and then on the bottom one there will actually be pins that come up through uh, the bottom and into the arch. Uh, but we'll be doing those uh, a little bit later. So we can do the, the final little cleanups and uh, scraping to make it sit all the way down in and uh, that is about it for this one. In the next video, we'll be doing all of the cabling and uh, figuring that out. But I'm actually going to change things. Originally, I was thinking about having three or four vertical cables. Uh, but after doing a few tests and things like that, I think I'm going to change it up and have some diagonal cables. So a lot of fun to come on that, and we'll see how it goes in the future. This is fun. Take two and call me in the morning. There you have it. Um, yeah, things don't always go to plan, and this was a fun one to experiment with, especially with doing the, the bag forming on these. I haven't done that before, and I learned a lot on there. Um, I may end up doing a video dedicated to that sometime, because for slabs like this, it actually worked really well. I just There's a few things I think I would do better next time. I was very happy with how the arches went in. It seemed to all really come together, and I'm really looking forward to next time, because soon we're going to start doing the cabling in here and running the cables through this all, which is where this all really comes to life, and I'm getting... <laughs> Getting excited. <laughs> um, so yes, this should be a lot of fun coming up here. Now I am rethinking the cabling on this. Originally I was planning on with just three cable points, uh, but after doing some testing at all, it looks like it's gonna have about a half inch of rotational shift to it, which isn't bad, but if you put a coffee cup on top, um, that means a full inch of movement one way or the other if it gets hit. And yeah, I think I'm gonna do some other things with like that. So I'm gonna redo the cabling out. We're gonna experiment and play with a few things on that. So stay tuned. This is gonna be a lot of fun. So I think that'll about do it for today. This is definitely a learning experience and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you think. If you have any questions or comments, let me know those down below. I do read through all of them and I've gotten several really good ideas from that. As well as I'm on the Hive Mind on Facebook group, the Wood by Right Hive Mind. Uh, we bounce around a lot of ideas. So I've been spending um, ideas for how the cabling will go on this. If you want to join that conversation, hop on the Hive Mind group on Facebook. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. And I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You all are the reason why I can keep making videos like this. So thank you so much. That means more than I can possibly say. Without patrons on Patreon and members here on the page, people who click that join button, uh, this channel would not exist. So uh, thank you. And we will keep the videos coming. So until next time, have a wonderful day. Boy, I tell you, that vacuum bag just sucked the air out of this project.